Welcome to this week's Tyler Talks. Yo, I have Amanda says, your father is an advocate of raw dairy. He mentioned it at base camp, which is one of the programs that he runs. And yet T. Colin Campbell of the China study and the book Whole says it is a definite no-no unless kept, did I just pick my nose? Sorry about that. Is a definite no-no unless kept to very minimal amounts. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? Well, I really love my father. He is my father, you know. And, you know, I've been around him for a very long time, and he's a brilliant man. And I also really like T. Colin Campbell. I've taken T. Colin Campbell's plant-based nutrition course. Um, you know, he's one of my gurus, so to speak. It's great to have somebody that's in the scientific community, that's a doctor, that's a PhD, that's, you know, really at the top of the game in the United States. And, and you know, he's done the largest studies ever conducted on human nutrition. So it's great to have that scientific view and all of that. And I really agree with a lot of what T. Colin Campbell says. I think he's a fantastic guy and I think he's on to things. So I think Don Tolman and T. Colin Campbell are on to things. Now, you asked specifically about the study that he did. And in the study that he did, he did a study on rats and mice, potentially. And what they did is they took the casein, which is a specific protein from milk, and they fed it to rats. And what they found is if they fed all these rats 5% casein, 5% caloric intake casein, nothing happened. And when they raised the amount of caloric intake of casein to about 10%, then cancerous tumors started to grow within the body. If they raise it up to 20%, bang, you have cancer. You know, every study they did, 50 rats, 20% casein, they all got cancer. They got all these other rats, 5% casein, no cancer. And then they took the rats and they could literally reduce the amount of casein down to 5% and it would turn the cancer off. Cancer would stop growing. Then they'd raise it back up and start growing again. So he learned that he could turn on and off cancer with animal-based protein. And there's a reason for this because of growth factor and many things. Of course, this was done in a lab, so you can't really say, well, if it happens to rats, it's going to happen to humans. So he went out and did the China study, largest study ever, and confirmed it pretty much with, you know, human studies showing that animal-based protein is what pretty much causes this. So with your question, you know, my dad promotes raw dairy, you know, in a situation, I believe, of living on a farm and growing your own food and having your own animals and having a goat and milking that goat yourself or having somebody do it, but seeing that it's eating greens and it's a healthy goat and it's got kids and you're not killing the kids just to get the goat milk, like, you know, it's pretty sustainable. The goat loves it. We had goats when I was a kid living on my dad's farm. We milked that goat and the thing was just like, yeah, milk away, buddy. The cat would come along, we'd spray some in its mouth. Not kidding, totally true. I know it looks like a fantasy, but it really did happen. And we'd take that goat milk, we'd make butter and we'd drink it and I believe it was fantastic. Now, what percentage of calories is that goat milk going to be for our entire diet of eating tons of fresh fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, all these different things? A very minuscule amount. You know, maybe at the most 5% of our caloric intake from that goat milk. So according to the studies, it has nothing to do with cancer in those amounts. Now, the problem with animal protein, I believe, comes from when you're eating the actual animal. When you eat a dead animal, let's say you only have one meal a day that's like a steak or a bunch of chicken or any kind of dead animal, that's a high amount of calories compared to all the other food you're eating. Because if you just eat a steak this big, that could be a thousand calories. You get what I'm saying? And it's coming from animal-based protein. And then you're not as hungry to eat all the other foods that you're eating, so it might, it might actually take up 20 to 30% calorically of animal-based protein that ends up leading to cancer. So if you're not eating animals, the amount of milk you would have to drink, or even eggs you would have to eat, would be quite a bit to reach 10 to 20% of your calories coming from those foods. Now, by all means, if you're eating plenty of eggs and drinking tons of milk, yeah, you could definitely hit that 10% by calorie intake, therefore causing, you know, a situation potentially to grow cancer in your body. So, you know, it's 2015. One of my New Year's resolutions for this year is to be completely vegan. So, you know, so far since January 1st, I've done that. It's only been like a week, but I plan on doing that because I do aspire to what T. Colin Campbell is saying. I do aspire to what all these guys are saying. And 
I cannot find a sustainable source that I trust of a goat eating greens with its kids at certain times where I'm willing to drink its milk and feel like it's okay. You know, if I was going to be drinking even raw milk, I don't know where it's coming from, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, if you live in Australia, you have access to, you know, Cleopatra's bath milk or some type of thing like that, and you actually go check out the farm, it's healthy, you know, they're letting the cows have babies and you feel comfortable with it. Like, wow, these are healthy cows, this is a great establishment, they're healthy, they're eating grass, life is good. Then I believe that raw milk at its core of what it truly is, is white grass juice. And that's what my dad would say. It's like taking wheat grass, putting it through the animal, and it's turning it into a beautiful milk. Now inside our small intestine, we have these things called lacteals. Lacteals is what takes the nutrition up. Lacteal literally means milk sucker. So our body, in essence, is changing things through the alchemical process of saliva, and digestive enzymes, and all pepsinogen, and all these different things, into a milk so that our body can uptake it. And milk is already milk. So drinking milk essentially is the highest form of nutrition on the planet, and it's readily available for the body. Okay? Yes. But, you know, you don't see kids my size still drinking off their mother, so it just seems like once you hit a certain age, a lot of those, you know, enzymes and things maybe don't exist in your stomach as much anymore, and you're meant to eat fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and grains, and maybe even some of the grass yourself. Does that make sense? So, personally, I don't drink milk. Da -da -da -da. I make nut milk, I make seed milks, you know, I make some oats and I put some hot water and it makes oat milk. And that's what I have, and I think it's brilliant, I think it's beautiful, I think it's nourishing, I think it's powerful, full of proteins, amino acids, minerals, vitamins, and all these different things, and it's fantastic. Do you need milk? Absolutely not. Just get rid of it. Throw it out. You don't need it. Okay? Then all the farms can kind of relax, you know, and animals can just do what they're supposed to do, run around, be happy. So there's two sides of the story. Now, when I do a fast, when I do a fast, an extended fast on water, and I come off of it, if I had access to fresh goat's milk, which sometimes we do get access, I get fresh goat's milk and honey, and I call it the land of milk and honey, and I drink some of that, and it's the most ecstatic thing on the planet. And I believe the nutrients are so powerful to rebuild my body from a state of fasting. I think that's what Christ would do, and Moses would do, and Plato, and Socrates, and Leonardo da Vinci, and Pythagoras, and all these guys would actually do that. But when I'm not fasting and I'm not broken down and, you know, reborn of the waters, then I'm probably not going to have milk. What would I use milk for? Well, if I had a baby, my wife is under stress, some things are going on, maybe she's not producing enough breast milk or there's a problem, she doesn't produce breast milk, then by all means I'm going to get my child on fresh goat's milk. Closest thing to human milk. Or find a milkmaid, a woman willing to give up her milk, make sure she eats a healthy diet and give her that. Or give the baby that. Him or her or whoever. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. According to the studies, you can still have 5% of your caloric intake from animal protein and not cause cancer, according to research. Gotcha? But what do you want to do? How do you feel? You know, and I believe we're all in this evolutionary process and, you know, raw milk might be fantastic. Processed, homogenized, pasteurized milk? Absolutely not. I worked in a dairy and I've seen what they do. I've seen how they make 2%. I've seen the chemicals that they put in to cough and all, you know, for vitamin D fortified and all this crap. Disgusting. And I've seen how they treat the cows, the iodine they put on the nipples, all the stuff. Like, you just don't want to be a part of that. Because right? whatever's coming in is not very good. Unless it's raw and the animals are treated very nicely, don't touch it. If the animals treat nicely, you really feel like having it, go for it. Am I ever going to shut up? Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.